Hello, my name is Jennifer Burley and I'm a PharmD candidate of the class of 2022. And today I will be discussing Bistolic, also known as Nabivolol. I will begin by going over a brief overview of Bistolic. Bistolic is in the drug class Beta-1 Selective Blocker and it is an antihypertensive agent and the indication is hypertension and it is a structure that is unique because it is comprised of two isomers, D-nabivalol and L-nabivalol. As I mentioned previously, Bistolic, also known as nabivalol, is made of two isomers, D-nabivalol and L-nabivalol. D-nabivalol is responsible for blocking the beta-1 receptor and produces antihypertensive effects. L-nabivalol is responsible for enhancing those effects. Nabivalol is highly selective beta-1 adrenergic receptor blocker at doses less than or equal to 10 mg, which results in decreased heart rate and myocardial contractility. At higher doses greater than 10 mg and higher concentrations, nabivalol also blocks the beta-1 and beta-2 receptors. Nabivalol also produces vasodilation by releasing nitric oxide, which results in a reduction in systemic vascular resistance and may produce side effects such as cold extremities and a reduction in exercise tolerance. I will now discuss adult dosing for bistolic. The hypertension indication. 5 mg of oral tablet will be initially given once daily and then the titrate the dose as needed at two week intervals based on patient response and tolerability up to a maximum of 40 mg once daily. Formulation and dosing adjustments for Bistolic. The formulation for brand name Bistolic is, comes in oral tablets and it's available in 2.5, 5, 10, and 20 mg. The generic is not available in the US. Dosing adjustments. For renal dose adjustments, if the patient has a creatinine clearance of greater than or equal to 30 mls per minute, then no dose adjustment is required. But if the patient has a creatinine clearance of less than 30 mls per minute, then initially 2.5 mg oral tablet of bistolic should be given once daily. And then if the initial response is inadequate, they may increase the dose, but with caution. For the hepatic dose adjustment, for mild impairment, no dose adjustment is required. For moderate impairment, such as child pew class B, initially 2.5 mg oral tablet by Stolic once daily should be given, and then if the initial response is inadequate, then they may increase the dose, but advise with caution. For severe impairment, such as child pew class C, it is contraindicated to use by Stolic. Adverse effects of bistolic include headache, fatigue, dizziness, diarrhea, nausea, trouble sleeping, chest pain, slow heartbeat, difficulty breathing, rash, and peripheral edema. Warnings, precautions, and contraindications for bistolic. Warnings and precautions. Do not use bistolic with other beta blockers. Do not abruptly discontinue bistolic therapy in patients with coronary artery disease. Severe exacerbation of angina, myocardial infarction, and ventricular arrhythmias have been reported following the abrupt discontinuation of therapy with beta blockers. Patients with bronchospastic disease should not take beta blockers. Advise diabetic patients that some beta blockers may mask some of the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia, particularly tachycardia, and beta blockers may mask signs of hypothyroidism such as tachycardia as well. Abrupt withdrawal of beta blockers may also exacerbate signs or symptoms of hyperthyroidism, which may precipitate a thyroid storm, and beta blockers can precipitate or aggravate symptoms of arterial insufficiency in patients with peripheral vascular disease. Use caution and monitor patients closely and adjust the bistolic dose according to blood pressure response when bistolic is co-administered with CYP2D6 inhibitors such as clonidine propafenone, fluoxetine, peroxetine, and more. In patients with known or suspected pheochromocytoma, initiate an alpha blocker prior to the use of any beta blocker. Contraindication. Patients with severe bradycardia, heart block, cardiogenic shock, decompensated cardiac failure, sick sinus syndrome, 
severe hepatic impairment, such as child Q score greater than B, and in patients with hypersensitivities to any of component of beta diastolic. I will now discuss patient education. Diastolic can be taken with or without food. If you miss a dose, take your dose as soon as you remember, unless it is close to your regularly scheduled dose. Then skip that dose, but do not take to two doses at the same time. Do not stop taking diastolic or change your dose without talking to your doctor. Take diastolic every day exactly as your doctor has prescribed you. Do not abruptly stop taking diastolic. If you do, then you may develop chest pain or have a heart attack. Tell your doctor if you are taking or plan to take any prescription or over-the-counter medications, vitamins, or herbal supplements because they may interact with diastolic. Tell your doctor if you have had acute angina including chest pain or discomfort or have had a heart attack. Tell your doctor if you are pregnant, plan on becoming pregnant, or are currently breastfeeding. Bystolic has not been studied in patients with these conditions. Tell your doctor if you are scheduled for surgery and will be giving anesthetic agents. Monitoring parameters for bystolic. The blood pressure should be monitored regularly, with a target blood pressure of less than 130 over 80 is recommended. The ECG should also be monitored. These are my references. Thank you for listening to my presentation.